So my friend Robin found this pottery competition on Facebook and she said, why don't you enter? So I did, and here's what happened. And she's going to face off against Julie Hilfrunner. I forgot the leather, the edge. Ah! You can find her on Tiny Chick Pottery. They call this throwing clay. Could be because, you know, you mess up, it gets thrown off the wheel. But I'm told, according to some brief study I did last night on Wikipedia, that it could be from an old English word, throwing, which means to turn or spin. If I was in the competition, I wouldn't take the weird bump off the floor. I forgot the leather, the edge! Ah! And then they paired me up with Kay, my pottery instructor. And that's when this day went from bad to worse. Now, in all seriousness, they ran short of people to be in the competition, so I asked Kay to join us in the competition. I knew what I was up against, but here's what happened. I thought that in all odds, one in four was the chance that I would end up in the same heat against my instructor. I figured I'd make it past the first round, but I pulled the short straw and I ended up with Kay in the first round and she she beat me she blew me away i did pretty good though okay so let me just tell you some of the people in this competition had never thrown pottery before had never sat down at a wheel before and maybe i think they probably just like watched a video online and that's no way to learn pottery i don't even particularly want you to see what happened here uh, i got a little too wide at the top i got a little too wide in general and then lost the height what they gave us was, I think, 14 ounces of clay, and you had to throw it four inches tall and three inches wide or something like that. I just let it get too wide too early on, and then I just couldn't get the height because the walls would get too thin and it would collapse. So I just started, you know, very carefully trying to pull it a little bit taller, and I couldn't collar it in. I didn't know how low the bar was set because we were the first round, which was another stroke against me. So Kay wires hers off and she drops it there and they measure it and she won, she won. So then she moved on to round two and I got to make video of the rest of it. Are you feeling any anxiety, Kay? Just a tad, I try not to show it though. As a result of being in this competition, I learned how to practice throwing better. It's actually incredible when you put yourself under pressure that you have to learn certain things again. So I came up with a group of steps to run through every time I throw something and I became so much better at throwing and I would really like to share those with you if you have a minute. But first I have to say I drew them out visually because I love to draw and I was planning on doing an entire video on how to do throwing. I think that maybe I should just do like a, like a Skillshare class so I can really get into depth on it. But for now, I'm gonna give you the steps. I'm just showing you a few of my, a few of the drawings that I've done this month. And I keep them in a binder, which is very organized and very great. And now I put pressure on myself to draw every day. So that is taking away time from my pottery, which you may have noticed that I've been kind of absent from the YouTube scene for a couple weeks but I've been thinking about you and thinking about making videos related to pottery, but I also really wanted to do illustrating and I wanted to illustrate on pottery. So I just made you one quick video about how I draw on pottery, but the beginning process of course is doing drawings. And so I have a set of drawings to show you regarding throwing and it's just really a brief overview. It's a study for what the tutorial or the class will be about after I get ready to actually put together a full class for you. Um, if you think that's a good idea, would you guys be interested in 
me doing a class with step-by-step -step lessons on throwing. I don't know where you're at. I think a lot of my subscribers for this pottery channel are not new to pottery. So maybe it's not something you're interested in. I have noticed a lot of views on my videos about how to do the glaze combinations that I do. So if you prefer glaze combination videos, well, let me know, you know? What I've done here is created a storyboard of what it might look like for me to teach a class in pottery throwing. And so my first square is wedge a lot, like really wedge up that clay. And in number two is form balls. So when wedging the clay, I think if you're going to practice, you should chop up your entire block of clay into pieces and cut it down to actual weights of clay that you can use in balls, make standard size balls. So like say 16 ounces, you're gonna make mugs with 16 ounce balls, just make 10 of them and then throw all 10 of those balls. And some of those, if they're not perfect, cut them down the middle and look and see exactly are you having a problem with the thickness of the walls and that sort of thing. Well, you're gonna take your ball, you're gonna slap it on the wheel, you're gonna seal the edge down to the wheel with your finger. You're going to cone up and push down twice. Then you're going to form a mound on the clay. And the reason I form a mound is because it really helps me center if I push it into kind of a little mountain. It's even all the way around. Then I flatten it into a cylinder and then I open it up with my thumb. And then I use two fingers and I pull towards the palm of my hand. I pull straight across from the center to the palm of my hand and open up the top. And then I learned this from Tim C, knuckle up. So I take one knuckle at the base of the outside and a couple fingers on the inside and I pull clay up from the base and then I knuckle up again. Then I pull a third time, but with a sponge. Then I compress the edge, which is basically you're not even really compressing the clay. All you're doing is you're making a uniform edge that's thick enough at the top. And then after I have my edge compressed, I rib the outside and then I trim the foot. I dry the floor because if the floor is wet, you lose the competition. And then I had to learn this too. You have to dry your hands before wiring off and then firmly grasp your pottery and lift it off. And sometimes a little bit of a twist in there helps it come off easier. Uh, but then you should say, post it to social media and everyone tells you you're wonderful. <laughs> Yay, look what I did. Oh, sorry, I gotta fix that. If you like this video, oh, I didn't fix it. If you like this video, would you please go ahead and give me a thumbs up? I'd really appreciate it. And can you believe it? We're up to like 740 subscribers and I'm so stoked and I totally appreciate it. And thank you so much to the people that subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, would you be so kind as to do so and ring the bell so that you can be notified when my next video comes out. See you soon. This is my world domination voice.